Hi, I'm Carl Taylor from visualeducation.com. In this week's lighting modifier video, we're gonna be looking at Fresnel lenses. So the Fresnel lens is a very important modifier for photographers, for cinematographers, for theatres. Um, it is essentially a simplistic version of a convex lens where some of the glass has been removed uh, to reduce the weight of the lens but still provide the properties that it needs to direct that light collimate it forwards. It was actually invented uh, or refined by a chap called uh, Augustine Fresnel. That's where it gets its name from. Um, he refined the design of these lenses around about 1820. And uh, they were used uh, originally for throwing a light beam a very long way. And you'll recognize that design used in lighthouse lenses because they are very efficient at casting a beam of light uh, in a narrow, very powerful, long beam. Now, they were obviously adopted into the photography industry and lighting industry for that very same reason. And we have a number of different Fresnels that photographers use and cinematographers use. And uh, I'm gonna walk you through. This particular one I've got here is the F10 Fresnel, which is the Bowens uh, fit, which um, is the fitting for our aperture continuous uh, LED lights. And um, here I've got a very small Fresnel on a little studio product um, photography light. And then over there, I have the uh, Broncolor Fluter, which is a large Fresnel, and I'm gonna walk through that. One of the important things about Fresnel lens design is the ability to move either the lens or the light source in relation to each other, which then changes that focusing beam. And that's really, really important to how we collimate the light, direct it forwards and concentrate that energy. Now, what it allows you to do, if I take uh, this one will probably be the best example, I'm going to spin this to face towards the wall. Now, I've just got a continuous LED light in this at the moment, but you can also put studio flash in there and I use it most commonly with studio flash. I use Fresnel lights for fashion lighting directly on the model. I use it for background lighting, for creating spotlights. It's just such a beautifully produced light. Now you can see that light on the wall at the moment there. Perfect circle. Perfect, soft, graduating circle of light. Now if you remember back to our video on honeycomb grids, we were able to create a small spot of light, but it didn't have that perfect gradation that we're seeing there with the Fresnel, the way that light is falling off for that super smooth gradation. So for background lighting, Fresnels are just so much more professional looking uh, than what you would get with a honeycomb grid. But they're also a lot more versatile as well because with a Fresnel, we spoke about moving the distance of the lens or the light from the lens. We can do that within the unit. So on this one, we have a crank handle here and it allows me to change the beam. So here I'm opening that beam to a much wider circle, still with that lovely gradation and fall off, but then I can close it back down again to a tight spotlight as well. So very versatile with the crank handle, allowing me to go from a wide beam to a tight beam and still keep a perfectly smooth gradation at the same time. Now interestingly with the physics of this, when we actually go to the wide beam, you would think, oh, it's a bigger light source and therefore it's going to be softer. But actually, interestingly, the shadows become harder when it's in the wider setting. You get a harder, crisper shadow in the wide setting because of the way uh, the central part of the beam is, is more here and the rest is spreading out. Um, so don't get tricked by that. When it's actually in the um, closer, smaller beam, where you might uh, think you would get a harder shadow, you actually get a softer shadow 
uh, when it's in the smaller beam position, which is a little, little bit unusual. It's not what you would necessarily think. So the Fresnel lens is essentially, as I said, it's a convex lens, which has been carved in a sort of staircase pattern, glass carved out of it. And it then replaces a convex lens to focus the beam of light. And by carving those shapes out of what would have been a convex lens allows you to end up with a lighter weight piece of glass. Because you have to imagine in uh, lighthouses, some of these Fresnel lenses are absolutely huge, uh, weighing you know, tons to uh, install them in lighthouses on the four sides or a rotating one for that uh, beam of light to be projected. But you see, Fresnel lenses are so efficient at focusing light and funneling it a long distance. That's why they've become a mainstay in cinematography and in theatre for projecting that beam uh, in a long direct line with a really beautiful collimated light. Now, um, if you've already seen our video on parabolic reflectors, I spoke to you how a parabolic reflector works in a similar way to a Fresnel, but in reverse by reflecting the point light source back out collimated, but with a Fresnel, it's doing it directly uh, from the light source through the glass itself. Now, that was the uh, Broncolor Fluter. This is the Aperture 600D with its Fresnel. I'm just gonna turn that one away a moment. Now, this beam isn't quite as concentrated as the Fluter, um, and to change the beam, you have to spin this part here, which is now changing the lens distance. And you can see my beam of light is spreading out wider and wider. But you see, this Fresnel is still giving a, a, a really nice, soft finish to the edge. There's no sort of defined pattern or honeycomb grid pattern or anything. But the fall off isn't quite as nice. The way the light falls off on the uh, Broncolor Fluter, I find far more attractive for lighting backgrounds. This one's giving a sort of harder um, circle when it's in the wide position. In its concentrated beam position, it actually improves. You can see that that harder spot in the middle and then it's gradually falling off a little bit softer. So it's um, a, a better light source when it's used in the um, focused spot beam position. But what it does allow you is to put your lights a long distance away. So if you're trying to emulate sunlight uh, and you, you know, you, you're worried about inverse square law uh, fall off uh, on the exposure because your light would be too close, you can move your light a long, long, long way away with a Fresnel and still maximize that power because it can throw it a long distance. So for example, if you look down the studio there at the moment where it's dark, you can see how powerful a Fresnel lens can throw the light. So you can see that beam of light is thrown right down to the other end of the studio, which is uh, 18, 20 meters away down there. And yet it's still a powerful uh, exposure, even at that distance. And obviously that increased distance, lighting something from a greater distance there can emulate the look of sunlight more strongly. Um, and then over here, we have a very miniature Fresnel. I'll just um, get the, the modifier there. That's this one here, which also has the ability to move the lens separate to the light source because the light source will be going in there. So this is just an accessory that clips onto a Pico light. Turn it like so. And that's exactly what I've got on this one here. It's a lot dimmer on this one because the uh, modeling lamps a lot less bright. And this is a tungsten one, so it looks like maybe a little bit warm. But you can see my beam changing and spreading uh, differently there. So there are obviously even small um, Fresnels available. I think Deco lights as well is another one for continuous lights for um, that sort of um, Hollywood style spotlights as well. So they give you a small ball of light. They're far more precise than a honeycomb grid. The gradation um, change on the light is far more accurate than a honeycomb grid. And the way the light is projected um, is far stronger because of the lens. So let's just take a quick look in our comparison lighting tool on visualeducation.com 
and look at the results. So um, in our comparison tool, I've got uh, two shots open. On the left here, we have the P70 with a wide honeycomb grid. We've already, already made a video about that if you wanna look at the honeycomb grids and you can see the lighting result that that is producing here. And on the right is a very much more refined looking uh, light quality. And that is the Fresnel on the fluter uh, being used in the wide beam position. So we've got the wide beam position on the Fresnel and the wide grid on the left. But look at the lighting quality feel, the difference, even though we've got the same position of the light. So you can see the position of the shadow under the chin, the position of the shadow under the nose, everything else, it's all the same, but the quality of that light has just got very much more depth and character and sculpting on the Fresnel compared to the honeycomb grid. Let's zoom in a little bit on the picture and take a look at some of those characteristics that we're seeing. Now, if we start off, one of the most obvious ones is look at the way the light is reflecting off of the forehead um, on our model there. You can see that the catch light in the eyes, very similar position. So our lights are much the same, same sort of size and scale in the catch light on the eyes. But the way that light is reflecting off of the skin and which one is more flattering, we can see that the Fresnel lens on the right is doing a much, much better job. If we move down, you can see the shadow under the nose. It's almost identical in position as well, showing that the light position would have been the same for both. But you can see the skin reflections under the eyes, off of the cheeks, different again. And then the shadow under the chin gives about the same sort of softness of shadow uh, when that Fresnel is in the flood position. Remember I said to you that when we use the Fresnel in the um, uh, wider uh, position, then uh, we get that slightly better shadow. If we go into the spot position, and I zoom in on that one, um, we've got that slightly softer defined shadow, only a little bit in this case. And what we can do here is if we zoom out here, and I switch this one over to uh, a Fresnel. So we'll start, that's the Fresnel there on the left now in the wide flood position, and on the right in the spot Position. So you can see that beam of light has been changed down a lot smaller, quite dramatically, just to literally illuminate just the face uh, and neck area only. So um, Fresnel lenses, fantastic modifier, can be a little bit pricey. Uh, available, of course, for continuous lighting, LED, HMIs and studio flash and uh, one of the uh, amazing characteristics about them is that concentration of the light source to be able to throw it a long distance and give a more flattering light source with that light beam than you would get by just simply blocking the escape angle in the way we do with honeycomb grids. I hope you liked this video and found it informative. If you did, please click the subscribe button and give us a like and we'll see you on one of our next videos.